Hi there, welcome to QA Box and this new series about mastering XPath for UI automation testing. All right, so what you are seeing on the screen is the agenda of this series. We are going to talk about XPath. How is it possible to execute XPath expressions within an HTML page since these are two different technologies? Then we'll talk about different ways of writing XPath like absolute and relative. Then we are going to write basic XPath. We are going to also talk about some XPath functions like contain, text, starts with, ends with, index, last position. We are going to then talk about different operators. We have like equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, greater than, equal to, and so on. Then we'll move on towards XPath access. And finally, we are going to discuss the difference between XPath and CSS. So I've already created a video on learn CSS in 17 minutes. So go and explore that out. All right. So the first thing that we have to do is XPath. So what is an XPath? So XPath basically st uh, stands for XML path language. So XPath is an expression language used to specify parts of an XML document. XPath is used within software and languages that are aimed at manipulating XML documents such as extensible style sheet language transformation which is XSLT and XQuery which is XML query and then also into web scrapping tool where we scrap the text from the web pages there also we make use of XPath and in document with a structure that is similar to XML like HTML on which we are going to work because when we automate our application we have to interact with the elements that are present on a web page all right so we are going to understand and learn how to write dynamic XPath when all those attributes are missing like you know ID class and there's nothing to help us then XPath comes to the rescue okay so note that HTML and XML have a very similar structure though they are two different technology HTML stands for hypertext markup language and XML stands for extensible markup language so since both are different but they are markup languages right uh, which is why XPath can be used almost interchangeably to navigate both HTML and XML document behind the scene uh, HTML pages they have the XSLT which is extensible style sheet language transformation right and we are going to do a little uh, uh, talk on this towards the end of this video right so in fact starting with HTML5 HTML documents are fully formed XML documents in a sense HTML is like a particular dialect of XML so that's the reason why you are able to write XPath expressions within HTML web pages so now what is an HTML document so in an HTML document everything is a node all right so the entire document is the document node every HTML element is an element node the text inside HTML elements are called as text nodes then we have attribute nodes which represent the attribute from an element node we also have comment node which are represented uh, by comments in the document right so let us uh, understand this so let me open the console and if we go to the element section so you could see that these are all different nodes right so the first one or the root element is basically the document node all right and then you have got different elements like we have head and body and you could see that these are encapsulated inside this opening and closing angular bracket right so this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag and for closing tag you always have the forward slash all right so in this html page we have these head and body tags right but the parent of both of these tags is the html tag all right so you could see that it's opening here and closing in here all right so then if i open this right these are the children tag right so this id div id is equal to demo it's a child of body and this html is the grandparent of this all right so this has two ancestors body and html right the immediate ancestor is called as parent right now if i expand this further 
so it further has this h2 tag and then you see the class is equal to title all right so this is your attribute node all right div and this h2 these are element nodes all right this id is equal to demo class is equal to title are attribute nodes and the text that you're seeing in here is the text node this is what i was referring to in here all right the entire document is a document node then we have got element nodes then we have got text nodes this is the text node and attribute node is the attribute node comment node if you comment out some html tag then that becomes the comment node all right and this is how it's being structured okay now the node in such a tree have a hierarchical relationship with each other like i just explained so if you consider this is the node in context currently right so this is the parent okay this node has parent c c has parent a now i has got this parent and c and a will become the ancestor all right so parent is also an ancestor but immediate parent we usually refer to that as parent and any parents that the that parent has they become the ancestor of the context node so the nodes at the same level means if you look at f and g they have the same parent e so f and g are siblings okay and then you have the immediate children as child and then the child of child they become the descendant for this that's a kind of relationship that is being followed now we understand that there is there are nodes there are different types of node and there is some kind of relationship between these nodes now we have to let's say find this m right so you have to traverse this node to reach to this and for that what we use is we use the expressions and some of the common expressions mentioned in here are you could see node name or you can also call these as tag and let us see an example so on the console i'm pressing ctrl f and if you do a forward slash and write html okay so now you could see one of two are being selected right this is the element node and the other one is this right so here also we are referring to this value right so now look at this so it basically in this search you can search for string selector is your css selector and xpath okay so this is how you have to so let's say if you have to find this particular div all right so you have to start from the parent so you're going to write html okay forward slash then you come inside body okay and then you mention div all right so it is telling that there are three divs so that's how we we traverse right so we, we we have a starting point right and then we have a target node that we want to hit right so it could be your element node it could be attribute node it could be your text node all right so this is a relationship so the next thing uh, and here are all the different uh, expression that we are going to use so beginning single slash indicate a select from the root node all right subsequent slashes indicate selecting a child node from the current node all right so we are selecting the child from this current node is forward slash is an abbreviation for child so what you can also do is so you can here mention child and two columns and div so then also you get the same result all right so this is the thing to forward slash all right select direct and indirect child in the document from the current node all right this gives us the ability to skip level so whenever we use this we usually are working on absolute x path whenever we go for two forward slashes we are working with relative x path all right and this is an abbreviation of descendant or self so all i could do is now two forward slash and i can say div so you could see that i find five divs all right and if i use the this particular syntax all right then also it would do the same 
all right because it's an abbreviation usually when we work we go for abbreviations right we don't use this so then asterisk select all the elements all right all the nodes basically i'll not use the word uh, elements because element is a node and we have other types of nodes as well which i just explained all right so it select all the nodes when you're working in html or xml everything is a node all right dot select the current context node all right a single dot is an abbreviation of self node all right then you have dot dot select the parent of the context node all right so we are going to see that into action in upcoming videos we use at to select attributes of the context node right and this is an abbreviation for attribute and then two colons pipe pipe chains expressions right so these are all expression we were working here so pipe chains expression and bring back result from either expression think of a set union then attribute value select node with a particular attribute value text is a function select the text content of a node or we can say select the text node contained in that element now the thing is you can also write xpath in the browser console right and the syntax that you have to use for that is and let us first find an element html and let's say body all right so we have got one on one of one because there's only one body tag in here so what if you want to run these uh, queries within your console so how are you going to do that so simple all you have to do is dollar x and then here and you have to pass in the x path now you could see that this is returning us an array and we know how to work with arrays so i've already created a series on javascript for beginners so there's only one element how are we going to access it using the index so when i say the zero it is returning me and you could see on the left hand side the whole body is being selected all right and hit enter now the body tag is being returned to you all right so if you are working in selenium or any other tool when you know you use javascript executor and you the only way to identify an element is through its x path right then you can use this as well but not this exactly i'll tell you what you have to use when you want to execute your javascript code within the web page this syntax is applicable when you write it inside the console so wait and watch for that and this is way you know you can write your javascript code with the xpath also all right next is xslt so that stands for extensible style sheet language transformation xslt is a language for transforming xml document into another xml document one or other format such as html that's the important thing so our browser implement xslt version 1 and that is the reason we can only use functions defined in xpath 100 so i have added a function from xpath 200 and that will not work in the browser and it will not work in the selenium um, code also if you are working on selenium all right that's why i have covered this topic so xslt uses xpath to identify subset of the source documentary and perform calculation all right so it can identify the control as well as perform some operations and we are going to see that for example there is a table and in that there is a column when age is mentioned so you want to identify all the rows when the value of age is greater than let's say 20 so that's an operation we can perform that calculation as well with the help of xpath operations so xpath also provides a range of function which xslt itself further arg augments so excel st1.0 uses xpath 1.0 all right while xs lt2.0 uses 2.0 and 3.0 uses you know 3.0 or 3.1 browsers do not yet support xs lt2.0 natively all right that's very important so now how can we still implement this 
xslt 2.0 support in the browser as a developer right so you are going to use 609 ce is it's a javascript based xslt 2.0 implementation frameless is another more lightweight XSLT implementation in the browser supporting large part of XSLT 2.0 and XPath 2.0 functionality, but natively browsers don't support it. So as a tester, if you are writing the XPath, make sure you use the functions defined into XPath 1.0. Otherwise, your code will not work. All right. So that's about introduction to XPath. Thank you so much.